King of Reeds, also known as Justin, y'all. Listen, when I say, <laughs> woo, yes, oh, yes, listen, listen, go ahead and bow, go ahead and, yes, oh, go ahead. please, I y'all. appreciate it. Like, you breaking barriers, bro. Shake that. Breaking barriers and being unapologetic about it and being your authentic self. And we don't see much of that. No, we really don't. But I can understand some people, you know, trying to be calculated when they're creating content and like what they say. Because doing this, like having commentary, especially when it comes to celebrities, can keep you from like, they's like, girl, I'm not letting her come to my listening right. party. Well, I'm not doing no interview. I actually was supposed to be interviewing Somebody very, very talented, up and coming male gay rapper. Um, but I think <laughs> I no! think something happened where we was like something happened. Like the team reached out to me, and uh, I thought it was about to happen, but I think you know <laughs> something must be, something must be said. But I understand. It. I'm not pressed about it. Mm-hmm. Still wish Saucy Santana. The, um, that's what was supposed to be. His team reached out. I was very, very much excited. They coming back. They come I, back. I hope so. But I think he like I did a video about him and Little Nas X, and it had been on my mind for the longest. I want to explain because a lot of folks say, "Well, why is you know Saucy Santana not as known yes. as a Little Nas X?" And I was like, "Girl, let's just be honest. Right. Like, let's talk about the real thing. Saucy Santana is very talented. Can mm-hmm. perform. Can de- like can manage a crowd, but." Girl, we got some shit in our community we need to work on. We look at folks like, <laughs> y'all can't crazy. be, yeah, like desirability is a thing yes. and it has helped Little Nas X be successful. And even him like toning down his queerness, his queerness in the beginning has helped him do the things. But I do pride Little Nas X for reaching out to Salsa Santana yeah. to work on a project before some other girls Boy. who could have been worked with Salsa Santana and claimed to like yeah. him. You could have been did some music with him before, but the fact that Lil Nas X is saying, hey girl, let's do it. Right. It's, it's very telling that him being just a nice person in general and caring about like people, people right. period, yeah. I, I It's so much I already want to jump into, but before we get ahead, <laughs> who is Justin? Ooh. We, I like to ask my guests when they come on who they are, we know how social media can portray, or what we put out, you know, but who's Justin? Well, I guess Justin and the Kingarees are Almost the same, uh-huh. but um, I think people see when they see the kangaroo, they see 10 15 minutes or 20 minutes or maybe even 40 minutes mm-hmm. of just me just being like the kangaroo. So I'm like, you don't see the other 23 hours out of the day where I'm just like, it's very relaxed, it's like <laughs> I'm not doing anything. Once I get my pain on some stuff, mm-hmm. I'm gone, like that's it. That's like, I'm not it. upset for the rest of the evening. Well, da, 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 da. I'm just Whenever I speak on something, it's because I'm passionate right. about it. And I think sometimes people take it as, oh, he's angry or something. So I'm like, no, girl, I'd be really, really good. Why do people always run to somebody being angry? I, I think it's easy to give black folks that, right. and specifically dark-skinned black folks, and it's even more dark-skinned, fat, black, dark-skinned folks. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot. It's a girl, they'll label you angry, you bitter, you bitter. Are, I'm like, girl, I'm not bitter. <laughs> Like, I don't know what to do to tell you that I'm not better. Right. So I'm just going to keep living my life. Period. So would you say Kanga Reeves is more as the venting of Justin? Justin's? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I do have my moments like Justin. I've always been a person who loves having conversations, love like, you know, offering my opinion on some things, even when they was wrong. <laughs> even when they was wrong, I was talking. But I've learned so much over the course of the years, and I want to reach out to those Justins who, you know, mm-hmm. felt some way about like things and you know like girl, I remember how I was when 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 I first started YouTube. I did make some like some jokes like all the other girls about somebody, oh girl, she got it. You know, oh she got it, she got it, oh she right. got it. And it's just like somebody had to tap me on my shoulder and say, Hey girl, like, you know, your words affect people. You have a platform, you need to make sure that you be mindful of that. And this was before I even tested positive myself. So that was the journey of me like getting myself together. Like so I can use my experience to educate other folks. So I love doing this shit. Sometimes she does become draining, but I think over the last I've been doing this ten years ten now. Years. So I know when to check out. Like girl, I, I know when I'm not looking at the comments. <laughs> Listen, how do you how do you navigate through the backlash mm. and still being your authentic self. I think I have a very strong, supportive um, audience. Mm. 
mm. and fan base and I don't think it's ever ended. <laughs> oh, thank you. I don't I don't think I like I'm not worried about um, some people who are pressed about what I said. Like I said what yeah, I said. I said. <laughs> and that's just what it is. Now I I'll listen to some of the criticism. I think one of the biggest thing is been able to tell the difference between criticism and hatred. Mm. And that's a like a really cause sometimes the critics be right. Sometimes they said some stuff and I'm like, you know what, you right on that, girl. Let me let me tone that down or let me fix that or whatever, but the message make sure the message is as fine and clean as possible. So I'm not out here just, you know, saying how I feel, but also there's information behind this, right. like stuff that can support what I'm saying. And I definitely like that, you know, as a commentary or even in your advocacy, mm -hmm. you say what you say, mm -hmm. but the way that you back it up is like, okay, so yeah, girl, I said this, <laughs> but this is why I say mm -hmm. this right here. Yeah. Now I'm fact checking you. So it's like, what, were you always as interested, interested in uh, reporting media or um, entertainment? I don't think so. Like uh, when people tell their stories about like being a, like a creator or a YouTuber, mm -hmm. I don't watch a lot of YouTube videos when I was young. Mm -hmm. I did not watch a lot of them. I was watching videos, but I was not watching YouTube videos. Like, no. I wasn't watching those. Um, but I think I've always like pop culture has always been something. Mm -hmm. Like I, there's some stuff that it, like I happen on a show. Like I know every phrase, every little thing. I'm talking about. I was watching I Love New York, Flavor Flav, this, everything. Yo. So anytime, like I just, all the pop culture references are stuck in my head. What, what's your favorite um, New York saying? Uh, <laughs> do I look like I give a fuck because I don't? Oh, <laughs> she was missing. Period. Because it showed that she did give a fuck. Right. But she, <laughs> so you like, see it. she was realizing like, girl, I, I actually do give a fuck. But you bitches ain't gonna know that I'm. That's <laughs> it. Yes, so that was her, like, girl, y'all ain't gonna see me crying on camera and stuff, but she yes. did. So, so, yeah, that's one of my favorite. I like that. I like that. She, mm -hmm. She's very entertaining. Yes. Definitely. definitely. Mm -hmm. So, on your platform, you get into all things celeb and influencer news. Mm -hmm. uh, have you ever received a, a backlash from someone that you reported from? So, let's say, in um, this case, like Sam Santana mm -hmm. or. Um, Keisha Cole, or you know, anyone like have they heard you and say, Hold on, let me reach out to Justin, let him know, like, yo, no. I've never had any direct com uh, conversation with Salsa Santana. Um, I'm pretty sure he's seen my stuff, or probably know, but it's always been love. I, I look up to him, and I'm glad to see somebody like him right. out here doing some shit. The only celebrity, there's been a couple, I think, but the only one <laughs> that I can really, that always stands out is Todrick. Todrick Hall. Yes. That was the biggest one where I was I was critiquing Todrick Hall and his proximity to whiteness before mm -hmm. everybody else was doing it. And the girls used to call me a hater. hater. Oh, they call me a hater. You mad because you're not. I said, girl, I don't want that type of audience. Right. I don't want no I don't want no 80% white audience. <laughs> I just and I don't want to get it from um, having black folks fight over fried right. chicken and watermelon in a video and call me <laughs> skits. Like that's just not that's not me. Like oh. that's never been me. Yeah. So he 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 didn't reach out, but he did do a response video, and he ate my ass. So he, <laughs> he was going in. He's like I don't even know who she is. I mean she oh. has 150. She would eat me up, but I was not going to respond with like like right. I wasn't going to give that. And I wrote an article like just explaining in detail. It's not you. It's your it's behavior. It's the stuff how you act. And the, how you, the stuff that you create that makes you dangerous. When did you realize that uh, YouTube was the way to go for you? Like, that was the, the realm of all things for you. Girl, when I stopped making payment arrangements, I guess. <laughs> when I stopped going to the leasing office on the 6th, <laughs> but like, girl, I ain't got it. <laughs> Check out my channel. So okay. Subscribe, please. I, mean, I, I think also when I came to Atlanta, um, I tell folks this story. When I came to Atlanta back in 2015, this was in February of 2015, I came to Atlanta. I was like, girl, it's either me pay my rent or me take this trip to Atlanta to see what it's like to be around people who watch me and enjoy me. Mm. And I was like, okay. I came to Atlanta, it was like 50 people showed up to this like meet and greet that I had did in Atlantic Station. Mm. Uh, what's that name? It's a restaurant on the corner. What is Yard House? Yard House. 
Yeah, like 30, 40 people showed up, more people showing up. And I was like, oh girl, this is for real, for real. And I think I only had like probably 40 or 50 thousand subscribers, I don't remember. Uh -huh. But it was like, wow, like a lot of people are really showing up. So I said, I'm gonna take a chance and um, came back, girl. I said, I'm gonna move to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna move in with my friend. I'm gonna stay with him for a minute, save us some money, girl. That shit went down here. <laughs> it, was, I, it was down here, like I didn't pay the rent. I ended up moving out. Oh, I chopped girl. Y'all can have this. Y'all can have this. But I ain't let them put me out. Right. Now, that's one thing I be trying to tell the girls like, if you can get out, get out. Get out. You saw the note on the door. They put that note. You know they put it. And the sheriff going Sheriff Department, like, they going to show up and give you a what's name. So, girl, just go ahead and move yourself. <laughs> but that was the real moment. I was like, you know what? All of this has been worth it. It's been some ups and downs and all of that. But um, I love what I do. I love. I love creating and stuff. I love having conversations. We see you do it every day. Almost every day. Almost every day. Almost I was like, day. I'd be like, yo. <laughs> it's a lot. Woo! It's a lot. Listen. You have to kind of have some distance because it's sometimes it's like, girl, I sometimes I be feeling like I didn't do that much content. Like, One day, I definitely, I was like, how, where does, does Justin get this time? I, I think, um, I don't know. I think I've learned how to discipline myself and, and, and get proper rest. And like check out when I need to check out. So I kind of prioritize my time as much as possible. <laughs> so a lot of people want to do media, podcasts, mm -hmm. YouTube. Um, what advice would you give them that's trying to jump into this journey of media? Um, I would say if you are interested in it, do not expect. Like the number one thing is, do not wait for it. I need to have you know a microphone. I need to this man. I need to because this girl. If that's the stuff, like, you don't want to buy all this equipment mm -hmm. and then you don't know how to talk, you don't know how to speak, you don't know how, like, it's just, you cannot wait for that. And then you want to spend no money on something that's, what if you don't like it? And can't use it. Yeah, like, you, and that too. So get the practice in. If you, like, I don't, I don't think it's nothing wrong with folks recording on the phone or, like, doing whatever, because it's like, get the practice in, because that's what helped me is the practice. So when my audience got bigger, I was already more like defined and stuff and knowing how to do stuff versus making mistakes when my audience is here. Because that's the thing, like, you don't want to make no mistake, like, girl, what is this? <laughs> what is this, honey? Like, what you just say? Like, Hold up. Okay. I'm sure, I'm sure they fact check. Oh, they do. They be getting me together. <laughs> they be getting me they together. Fact I, I be having my little MacBook out. I be like, let me make sure. And if it's not something I'm not sure about, I've learned if I'm not sure, mm -hmm. I'll find a way to say it. Wait. Where it's like, okay, girl, I, I, you know, don't come back. I don't know about this one, but somebody check. I, I do the Wendy, <laughs> but I ain't got no Norman in the back. I was like, girl, listen, said, Norman, you as transparent as the transparent sheet from middle school. Like you <laughs> definitely put yourself out there and you utilize your platform. So, you know, use it, utilizing your platform for HIV, your HIV status mm -hmm. and HIV advocacy. Um, what, what was that feeling of first jumping into like? I'm gonna just use my platform for this for this video. I think it's just one of the things I just like. It's just a conversation. It's just like anything else. I think sexual health. It, it, we have those conversations where we're, where we're around our friends. It might not be as you know, quote unquote, articulate or whatever or in depth, like you said. Uh, but we are talking about sex. We talking about like what you did that weekend, girl. Who you did it with? All the other stuff. So I'm just doing the same stuff. I mean, using my experience. Like that's it. I I love doing it. So I don't I don't think I'm in HIV advocacy necessarily because I feel like that you be doing it like all the stuff that you do. I just feel like I'm just amplifying what y'all are saying. Like if somebody said, Hey girl, we need you to come, you know, do the, speak on HIV in Atlanta. I'm like, let me point you into somebody who's actually doing the work because I don't want to take no opportunity for somebody who's actually on the ground talking to folks, testing folks, and reaching out to folks, getting people on the ground. Or whatever, I, I I don't want to take that, but I will amplify my experience and talk about the importance of sexual health. Right. Well, you're definitely amplifying it, even with um, putting together George and Dominique like that. Oh yeah, that was fun. That was amazing. <laughs> that, that was, was fun. Like, that was you. amazing. So speaking about our narrative, you know, mm -hmm. someone that's living with HIV, being black, mm -hmm. you know, being a male, like was that part of was you coming up on your platform with your status? Was that you taking back your narrative? Um, I think, I, I guess so. Um, I wanted to, you know, once I found out, I was like, my friend was like, 
But you don't have to tell people, you don't have to say yeah. anything publicly. I say, yeah, but it makes me more comfortable mm -hmm. to be able to, because I don't want to be talking to girls like I've been talking to <laughs> you. And they say, well, girl, are you a prep? And I'll be like, ah, uh, <laughs> I don't. Next, next question. Next question. <laughs> so I, it may be more authentic and it may be more like relatable to folks because I don't think there are as many people who are living with HIV who are talking, um, who are, you know, telling their experiences and stuff and are able to articulate it like good. But you know, going to that, like one thing that you said um, that always stick in my head is, um, they be like, so who gave you HIV? Oh yeah. No one gave me HIV because it was, I was like, it's just <laughs> Listen, now when people, who gives it? Well, you know, <laughs> I've been listening to Justin. It, you know, no one gave it to me. It was consensual, but I like that. So I, I got just tired of hearing, you know, some folks make up, not everybody, but some of the girls, I, I was like, girl, that's not what me and you talked about. It like, story time. Like, it's like, it gets very much when, you know, this happened, my ex cheated on me. And I'm not saying that that doesn't, but, but it's like, girl, we shouldn't have to make excuses for it. Like, it's just like, girl, no one gave it to me, girl. Like, I, I, I was out here having sex and I tested positive and I'm whatever. Like, and that's just what it is. Like, that's just what it is. Like, when people I'm sure you heard the story yeah. too. Like, listen. Uh, the girls, we, and there are some story folks. Story time. There's girls, some of the people have experienced, like, you know, rape and all the other yeah. stuff. And I don't want to take away from those yeah. folks, but I know some people try to kind of tell something similar to make themselves not look like, you know, that they did something wrong. Did you have a coming out story? Oh yeah, I checked mine after 34. I definitely had a coming out. What was that coming out story? I think mine was, I was 14, 15. I was like, oh girl, this is not giving. <laughs> this is not giving. <laughs> like it was, and I knew very like, on, I was like, girl, I am not attracted to girls. I just don't yeah. see it. I don't see it. Um, just like me telling my, my parents, like telling my mother, she didn't take it well. She did not. My mother was. She's not a big religious person. Yeah. But she, she, she well, there. she was like, oh, girl, this. I know this ain't it. <laughs> but I kind of fought it, and then I came back. I was like, oh, girl, I'm, I'm watching gay porn, girl. Like, <laughs> I'm, so I'm like, I wasn't even sexually active. But I, I wish that more parents would be understanding their children and stuff because there was some stuff that I was doing at 14, 15 that could have like led me in another spot. Like I wish that I could have comfortable telling my mama like hey is this boy I like da, da, da. first is talking to Tug, some 25 year old that I met off of AOL chat room or right. something <laughs> like girl like and I think that's the that's that's the harm that happens when you are not like listening to your child and understanding them and all the other stuff at any point when you came out on YouTube or you know when you started educating your likings on um, YouTube on your channel your platform was there any at any was there any at a time where you received any backlash or you know thought about like dang I'm gonna lose followers or coming out of it like hey or like yeah, HIV positive? Um, hmm. I don't really know. Um, I did. I think a little bit. I definitely thought about it. Of course, I definitely thought about it because it there was some hesitation of like you know saying it. Yeah. What what is the purpose of like girl? Because I know so many other people need to hear it, like so many people. And that was something I was willing to like gamble and sacrifice that I'm going to live my authentic self. And if y'all just don't choose it, yeah, I'll just find somebody who will. Well, I'll just be good. But I don't want to keep performing and stuff. Like, I just don't. So I think it was definitely a lot of thought. But I was like, girl, fuck this shit. Like, I don't give a damn. As y'all can tell, Justin doesn't care. <laughs> I He's do not do what he do. When you know yourself and when you know that what you embody, it's like, man, man, what y'all say to do them? Yeah, I've been through a lot of shit, so I'm like, it is. <laughs> just it is what it is at this point. Going back to our LGBTQ plus community, mm -hmm. you know, doing the work that I do and the work that you do and you mm -hmm. see and that your friends do, um, you know, we're out in the community and edu doing HIV edu educating or testing. Um, when I'm in the field, I when I have a newly diagnosed, the first thing that they always say is, who's gonna love me? Mm -hmm. Instead of them saying, okay, so, you know, what's next? How do I get on my meds? How, who's gonna love me? Why do you think that that's the first focus? Like, I think because we see that, we see it on the apps. We see it like everywhere, like how people like, 
make comments and stuff. Um, I made a comment, um, and I don't think I've made it. I don't think I created an environment where my friend at the time uh, felt comfortable disclosing that he was HIV positive. So I think people just know that, oh, girl, you HIV. Like you're gonna be alone. You're gonna be alone. You're probably gonna die alone. People like nobody's gonna want to be sexually interested in you, let alone like marrying you or being in a relationship with you. So I, I think that is like. They're not even thinking about themselves, they're just like, I'm going to be alone. If we make it comfortable enough to disclose to each other, or will we will we ever get to that point of being vulnerable in our community? I think it's going to I definitely think it's going to take a lot of work, but I think it it's it starts with us. Um it, it starts with me. Like I you know, if if I'm in a group setting, because you know the conversation stuff comes up, and I hear someone say some stuff like, "Yeah, I shut, I shut that shit down." <laughs> like I try not to be as combative. But I'm like, "Girl, what do you mean by that?" I was sitting next to a friend not too long ago, and they were saying that, "Oh my God, like, you know, that's not a, like a close friend." But it was some friends there, and, and one of the people who I'm cool with was there, and he was like, "Oh, the, those they them that shit is weird and." and dumb or something. I'm not even paying attention. I'm on my phone. And I heard that in life. I was like, girl, what do you what do you mean? It's weird. It's just a lot. I don't how you want me to approach you? Hey day. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> Let's now, get into it. I spent 30 minutes talking to them explaining. They eventually sort of apologized. I was like, not only that, my home is a safe space for queer people, period. And you're not gonna come because I don't give a damn if there were no trans folks in that room and no non-binary. Like, yeah. it's it's always as if they are there because it's not a performance for me. This is real fucking life to me. So that shit, just like, hey girl, that's uh uh. Like we have to hold folks accountable, um, our friends and stuff accountable when they stuff stuff like say stuff like that. Right. And it, it is a lot of work. We, it, it's a lot of labor, but I'm willing to do that. To you, you what does this closing look? What does this closing look like? Um, mm, the disclosure doesn't look like that it is the person who is living with HIV job to disclose, mm. to bring up the conversation. It is both parties job. I think when we talk about like disclosure, it's just like, girl, you need to disclose your HIV negative. What did you do or whatever? Like you, dis you need to disclose too. But it's like, no, you need to, we both need to. And I can't be the one bringing all of the labor mm -hmm. And saying, oh girl, you know, just want to let you know I'm HIV positive. Just want. Right. I'm not doing that shit every time. I'm not doing that. That's, I'm that's not doing right. that. It's but some, right. when you say that, some people, because I know somebody get ready to crop this now. Oh girl, she don't be disclosing. She don't be disclosing. Da, 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 da. Oh yeah. yeah. I remember somebody had said, that's a girl. I had, at that time, I was in a relationship for like two years. I was like, I've not had to disclose nobody because I'm in a relationship. Mm -hmm. But I do believe in disclosure. But what I'm not going to sit here and tell y'all is that. I'm not gonna be starting the conversation every, every fucking time. I ain't doing it, especially when y'all ain't asking. Cause when I got back into the dating thing, these men they don't even be saying shit. They and shout out to you, Bobs, cause girl, I cannot. The verse agenda is probably gonna eat for me. I can't do it because these times be out of control. They don't even ask. They ain't putting on no comments. They, go. they just got spit. Let's go. And that's it. And I'm like. You not asking me, hey girl, what's it giving? Thank like, you. so don't be, don't be. Like, well, you need to disclose. Mm -hmm. Have we had a conversation? Yeah. You ain't saying nothing. And then what's so funny is, once I disclose, they disclose. Too. Right. <laughs> I take them all the time. They worry about. They worry about um, this person. I. They probably all right. They wait for you. Wait for you. Y'all wait for each other. <laughs> When do you think is a good time to Does disclose? He, do you? I don't think it's ever a good time to disclose. I don't know I if it's like the first, the first encounter or the second or I just I don't know um, because it's all about that person. The person. And it's just like that person ain't even asking. Are you even asking? And are we even like? Are you asking? No one is. Asking. I can't have met two years and we just this. We're not saying nothing. We're not no. doing. But that's how it is. But there's no harm going on because obviously he hasn't transmitted to him or whatever, but it's just the stigma is so strong. It's like, I don't know what he could say. I, you know what, to be honest, I'm going to take a strong, it's just, I don't know what, the, he, the person could be mad because he's never, unless he's asked and, 
he, the truth right. was not told unless he lied. But I don't know. I feel like, oh, that's a very difficult one. Because my politic is very strong, child. <laughs> it is, she is on the other, progressive, girl. She over there is giving radical. Because I'm just like, if the person hasn't asked in two years and there's never been a conversation, I don't think the person should be like, should be, because um, it's not like he lied. He didn't lie because he never asked. But folks be like, well, no, you're supposed to. Girl, y'all don't even be disclosed. Y'all don't be disclosing all the shit. Y'all don't be disclosing because y'all got bad credit. No. And then we can't get, you the reason why we can't get approved for this apartment because you got an eviction on your, you ain't disclosed that. You ain't disclosed you owe Bank of America $10,000. Or you that you a scam. <laughs> Listen, unless you a scam. So it's just like, have the questions be asked. Like, have it. Have you asked the question? Mm-hmm. Yes, morally, yeah, it can be fucked up, like a little bit. But it's like if we are not asking, we're not like having those conversations. You cannot get upset. Guys, we have Justin here, <laughs> also known as the King of Reeds himself, who doesn't mind again letting you know what it is, but also backing up with facts. <laughs> Alright, okay. so Justin, I created this game, Uh-oh, girl, not a game and child. the name of it is called King dot 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 Reed. No, no, no. So, <laughs> you just made that up. <laughs> the game is called King's Reed. Um, so I'm gonna give you some clues regarding celebrity gossip from this year and last year, and you're gonna tell me who the celebrity is. Okay. So let's go. This Good Morning America host celebrates 20 years of service. Good America host? Mm-hmm. Good Morning America. Kiki Palm? I'm being funny. Uh, I can't. I don't watch her bad Good Morning America. I'm trying to really think of who that is. Is she white? Black. Gail? Oh, Robin girl, Robin. I said Gail. Oh, Robin. Oh, yeah. We love Robin. Yes, I know she was married to a white woman. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. I yes. You know they. Give me a white man too. Yeah. Listen. Come take me up. Who recently won the most awards at the 2022 Grammy? Who won the most awards? They was black. Yeah. Yeah. Really. Yes. Are you about to say Mariah Carey? No. Girl, I don't know these. Mariah, words. you you know you, you do say you black. You know you say it without saying it. Uh, John Batiste. He's won that many Grammys. He this he won the most this time. Oh, I thought you meant like overall. No, this. I said all girl. Black folks don't have that many Grammys. Who said I'm not suicidal, suicidal if anything happens to me in there? <laughs> Don't she work with a, don't she work with AHF? <laughs> What's he he had his own thing going on? He had something Black. trying to pick up the ground. <laughs> yeah. Um, Justice Smollett. Yes. yes. Which housewife is leaving their husband after eight years? Um, is that the white woman or something? Uh with the white man, Ashley Gardner. Oh yeah. She black? She mixed. <laughs> <laughs> this celebrity male has had the most pregnant women in the last. Oh, girl, girl, fat rap killer. <laughs> <laughs> um, listen, girl, Nick Cannon. Nick Cannon. Why are you bringing him up? Which house? Start itching. Which housewife allegedly took a married man's? I mean, a married woman's husband. Alicia Keys. Oh, <laughs> she <laughs> took somebody's husband, but she uh, was Can you take somebody's husband? No, you can't. You can't take nobody's husband. You can't. This motherfucker was already leaving, girl. Go on. Yeah. It was a housewife took somebody's husband? You know what they was trying to say? Portia took that. Uh, oh, girl, that was no damn real marriage. What's her name? Fallon or something? Fallon, yes. Well, yeah. Yes, yo. Oh, what's my name? That uh, man is cute to me, though. Yes. I'm gonna lay up with him, but he cute. After 13 years. This individual is now free from conservatorship. And they black? No, it's just she white. Oh, this probably black pop coach. What you, <laughs> girl? What's it's this? It's a mix. <laughs> girl, it's I'm mix. looking for like, where, <laughs> where are the black people at? Yo, listen, y'all. This is Justin. If you're not following him, make sure you follow him ASAP. 
Please do. Listen, Please Justin, do. man, thank you for coming through. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad to Listen, be here. We have Justin in the building. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. So Listen, much. so what's next? Like, let everyone know, you know, what's next and how they can stay tuned to all the amazing things that you have going on. You can follow me on OnlyFans slash. Hey. I <laughs> okay, it was a little cake back then. We love yeah, it. Yeah. It's a gym. <laughs> but I haven't. Um, I am working on something similar to that. I think I want to get into the, and start reviewing porn. Ooh. Yes, I can see. <laughs> I, and and you know what? All this recent drama with all the stuff that's been going on with the only man girl. I was like, I'm gonna give me a podcast. They need it. Just strictly for that. And people tuning in. They will tune in. Oh yeah, they are definitely gonna do that. But um, <laughs> what am I working on? I am I'm working on. Girl, I don't know. It's some shit I can't I can't say. Okay. But I am trying to stay relevant. That's about it. I am making content on TikTok. Mm -hmm. You can follow me, cause girl, I've been TikTok. I've been wanting to stay off that shit. Why? I've been wanting, cause it's addictive. Yes. I, it's already too much. Y'all want to Y'all want to be on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter. Twitter. You want me to do YouTube. You also, I got to watch all these cable subscriptions. When do I have time for me? I got to watch this Say show. Right. With, I'm like, this is too. I don't want to share this with y'all. <laughs> this is everywhere. I'm going to hide this. Okay, but um, like I, I I do enjoy like talking shit. So uh, TikTok has been that thing. But you can just follow me, support me, and my journey to some stuff. I am working on some big things. Coming up in the next couple of weeks that I can't announce yet because okay. of contracts and stuff. Okay. Okay. But I am excited about it. Um, and you can check out the YouTube Originals thing that you mentioned where we talked about. We sat down with George and Johnson, um, Dominique. Mm -hmm. um, oh my God, uh, House on the House of LaBeja. Yes. Um, Kia LaBeja, love her down. And my girl, Marnina. Marnina showed the buck out. When she yes. gave me statistics of black women. 7%. Oh my God. Yes. Like, I was I just been, shook. I've been in there. Yes, and she does a lot of HIV advocacy and stuff, and love her the fuck down. And she's on TikTok too. I can't remember her name, but I need to follow her. <laughs> okay, I need to follow her. I just got on there, so yeah. But those are all the things, um, and I appreciate you, you know, having me here to have a conversation on a Saturday because I don't get up on a Saturday to do anything. Listen, I, you ain't saying catch me on the week. Thank you. It's not giving. Yeah. Stay tuned to all that Justin has going stuff. on. He's out here working, doing his thing. Again, That's thank right. you so much you. for coming on, bro. Absolutely. We are definitely rooting for you. I appreciate it. Looking that. to connect more. Absolutely. Any endeavor that you have going on. You was on the last episode of Chasing Atlanta, wasn't it? Yes, I was. I did say, I was like, I think that's him. That's me. You was in the crowd. I was in the crowd. <laughs> oh my God, what is this? So I have you a gift. Thank you so much for coming. Okay. Again. This is my stipend. Yes, yes. This is my stipend. Yes, yes. But, um, you know, you're just doing great things, bro. Oh, I just wanted to it. go ahead and commend you. Thank Cheers you. Again. She happy. Cheers to you. Is this Milan's deal, though? I should have got you that. What's your address? Girl, you is not <laughs> giving me that. This shit probably got cancer in it. All right, you guys. So thank you so much for tuning in. Janela, your sky. Kangaroos. Thank you.